How's it going everybody? Welcome back to Bora Motors. I'm AJ Hart, here today with a new guide to maintain your ride. For today's video, we're going to be working on the Cabo Mantis Pro Vora Motors Special Edition. I think I got that all in the correct uh, order. It's a bit of a mouthful if I'm being honest. It's the newest scooter to our lineup and it's a lot of fun to work on if I'm being honest. There's a lot of cool stuff going on on this scooter. For today's video, I'm going to be doing a tire replacement on the front and rear wheels of the scooter. It's a little bit of an elbow grease job, but it's nothing too difficult. All you're really going to need to get this job done is a set of Allen keys and an 18 millimeter socket wrench or a 18 millimeter wrench in general. I used a socket wrench. If you've got it, I recommend using a pry bar because some of these things can be pretty tight. And I also think that you're going to need a heat gun because that's gonna make this job a lot easier. I'll explain that a little bit more later. With that being said, rather than me talk your ear off, why don't we go ahead and jump right into getting this job done. To start this job, we need some space. So let's start by removing the brake unit on the Mantis. Look for these two screws on the arm and remove both of them. Now we can lift the brake unit up and out. Next, to continue making space, we're going to remove the fender above the wheel. This is held on by four screws. Just remove the four of them and the fender will come free. At the top of these gold arms, you're going to see screws that we need to loosen up to make room to drop the wheel. You see, these gold arms hold the wheel secure all the way. So just loosening the bottom nuts won't be enough room to drop the wheel completely. We need to open it up top as well. So grab two eight millimeter keys and loosen up both of these screws. Just open them up a few turns each, nothing major. We're not trying to remove these screws. We're just making space. Now that that part of the arm is open a bit more, we should have the space we need to expand the arms enough to drop the wheels. So let's move down and get those nuts off. Now these nuts are going to come to you covered in Loctite which is great for safety, but bad for work. In order to loosen these easily, we recommend that you grab a heat gun and start blasting this area with heat. This will liquefy and weaken the Loctite temporarily. Then you can get a wrench into the mix and pry that nut loose. We're going to need to repeat this process on the other side, of course. Use a heat gun to weaken the bond. Loosen it with a wrench. and then take that nut off. Now, if you look closer, the Cabo Mantis actually has a total of four locking pins. At this time, we're going to remove the outer two. Grab a screwdriver or small tool and start to pry these two pins off. For the time being, don't sweat the inner locking pins. Just remember that they are there. Once the outer pins are off, you should be able to grab hold of the wheel and drop it down. You may need to yank it out, or in my case, pry the gold arms just a teensy bit out more to drop the wheel completely. But now we have our wheel out so we can focus on removing the tire. First of all, find the nozzle for the air tube and make sure the wheel is completely deflated. If you have a small Allen tool, push that into the center pin and let the air deflate all the way. You'll hear it whistle as the wind rushes out. I'm also going to say now is as good a time as any to remove those inner locking pins in case you are worried about them falling off or losing them. Now on the air nozzle side of the wheel, you should see six little screws around the rim. We're going to remove all six of these screws. This will separate the tire from the motor. Once all six screws are out, just pull the tire towards you and it will separate from the motor. You'll notice that the metal rim is still inside the tire. You can pull that out now. That's used to hold the tire in place with the motor. Now in total, you should have four pieces here. That rim, the tire, and the motor. Now you'll notice I said four pieces because the tire is actually two pieces. The tire and the inner tube tucked inside. If you yank that tube out now, you can now replace either parts of the tire. 
the tube or the tire, dependent on your goals. If you have a leaky tube, now's the time to replace that. If you wanna to swap to a different tire, you can do that as well. As I reassemble this wheel, direction is important to keep in mind. So for us, that brake disc is always going to be facing away from us. Keep that in mind and it will make these next descriptions easier. Now when we go to put the tire on, we need to make sure that the outer tire is facing the correct way. Look around the tire and you should see an arrow that denotes the direction the wheel should spin. Currently, the tire is showing that it wants to spin right, which is backwards if we put it on now. So I will flip it around so this arrow is moving forwards, the correct way it will spin on the motor. Next, as we insert a tube into our tire, it's also important that we keep the valve facing away from the brake disc. Fill your tube with a bit of air to make installation easier and work it into the tire. Before we start assembling it again, make sure that the tire direction and the tube nozzle are both facing us. In order to assemble the tire rim, I advise that you pull the tube out of the tire just a little bit. Then find the hole in this rim and feed the nozzle through that hole. Once that's fed nicely, you can seat the rim so it sits flush within the tire. Now we're ready to mount the tire onto the motor. Look on that motor for a large divot in the shape. When you feed the tire back onto the motor, make sure to line the nozzle up with that divot. Once the tire is onto our motor, go ahead and wiggle it around a little bit more to line up all six of those holes. Now we can insert those screws and tighten them all down. I find it easiest to thread each screw in a bit and then go back and tighten them down. Make sure that when you do tighten them down, you do it in a star pattern to ensure a flat seal. You really wanna make certain that these are tightened down nice and securely. These tires can spin really fast when they're going up to 40, 50 miles per hour and you wanna make sure that your ride is safe. Last but not least, let's not forget to put the valve cover back onto the air valve. You don't want that valve getting messy and gross and filled with dirt. Once your tire is assembled, we can start getting our wheel back into our scooter's arms. In order to do that, the first thing we want to do is put our inner pins on. It's worth noting that these pins are going to sit differently than most locking pins on other scooters because the tongues on the inner ones are going to be facing away from the wheel and be hanging towards the bottom of the scooter. Now we can lift our wheel up and into the arms. You may find that even after lining the wheel up, you may need to pry the arms out just a tad to get the wheel to pop in. Once the wheel is sitting in, we can grab our other locking pins and place them into place as well. Make sure the tongue this time is up and latching into that hook in the arm. Next, we can take our nuts and tighten those down a bit on each side. Once the nuts are seated, make sure to go back and really fasten those down. We want to make sure that these are super secure as well. If you have Loctite, go ahead and put that on here. We're coming up on the end of this, so let's go ahead and put the brake back on here. As I'm sure you all noticed, the mount for this brake is a bit strange, so let's talk about why it's so long. This metal plate is actually used inside here to secure the motor line inside the metal arm, keeping the motor cable secure and out of the way. So, just like before, we want to tuck that cable into the arm, then bring our brake plate down over it, and secure it with these two screws. Move up the motor wire, and you'll see a little divot in the arm again. Go ahead and tuck the cable into that little crevice to keep it secure and out of the way up top as well. Now remember how we loosened the arms up here? We need to tighten those back down, so grab your allen keys and start pulling those back together. With our arms secure again, it's time to put our fender back over the wheel. This is super simple, just put all four of those tiny screws back into place. And there we have it, our front wheel and tires have been removed, swapped, and replaced. Now, let's go ahead and head over to the rear wheel and do it all over again. Doing this job on the rear wheel is honestly beat for beat the exact same job as removing the front wheel. First, we will remove the fender and make room for the job.
Then we can remove the brake unit by unscrewing these two screws here. Once the brake is free, we still need to open up the arms a little bit to make room to drop the wheel. So we will look for these two higher up screws and loosen the both of them to make more room. Just a few turns to loosen them. Again, we are not removing these. Then we can remove the rear nuts. But because they are held on with Loctite, you will want to grab a heat gun and warm up that gun. Once it's loose, grab a wrench and pull these nuts off. It's going to be tough and you may end up wanting a longer arm than I currently have on my wrench. After that, we can take a small tool and pry those locking pins free. On the opposite side, we will of course repeat that process. Blast it with a heat gun, unscrew and remove the nut, then grab a small tool and remove the locking pin. Now our wheel is ready to be dropped down. You may find that you need to pull the arms out a bit more just like I did on the front wheel, or in my case, some of the Loctite was holding the wheel in place in the arm, so I used a small tool to pry the wheel down and free. When your wheel drops, something you do need to be mindful of is how short the motor wire is on this side. You can see here I've got something around 6 inches tops to work with, so we'll need to be clever with our workspace. Before we can start taking this tire apart, let's remove the tire valve cover and deflate this tire completely by pushing that pin in. Once the air is out, we can remove all six of the screws on the tire. Make sure that you're unscrewing these screws on the opposite side of the brake disc. I mentioned before about needing to be smart about our workspace, so as I unscrew these, I'm going to rotate the tire a little bit and then unscrew the next ones. Once all these screws are removed, we can remove the tire. Flip the motor face down and push the tire down. It will break free and you can remove it from the motor. Now the tire itself will have this metal rim. Go ahead and peel that out and make sure to feed the valve through the hole. Now we can grab our inner tube here and remove it from the tire. Once that's free, you can replace whatever you need, the tube or the tire. Now as we install the new tire, look to the rubber and find this arrow that will denote the direction it should spin. Make sure that the arrow is on top, pushing the direction of the deck so you know it will spin the correct direction. Next we can look into installing our inner tube. Make sure that as you feed the tube in, the air valve here is pointing away from the disc brake. For me, that means towards the camera. With the directions of everything set, I'm ready to feed my tube into the tire. Once the tube is seated, we can grab our rim and feed that back onto our tire. Look around the rim for the small hole and feed the tube valve through that hole. Then finish setting the rim flush around the inner part of the tire. Now we can put our tire back onto our motor. Look around the motor for this large divot. When we reseat our tire, we want to make sure our air valve is lined up with that. Bring the motor out towards the rear of the arms for the best access. Now we can see our rimmed tire onto our motor. And again, we can replace all six of those housing screws back into the rim and secure it to our motor. I like to thread each of these screws first and then secure them in a star-shaped pattern to ensure a solid and flat seal. Now it's time to reseat our whole wheel. Just lift the wheel and reseat those spokes into our arms. Like the front wheel, you may want to pry the arms open a little bit more to get the wheel into place. Now let's get those locking pins reseated. Like with the front wheels, the Mantis has four locking pins, two inner ones that face out on the bottom, and two that go on the outside that hook into the arm. Now we can take those nuts and secure them on each side of our wheel. Make sure to really tighten these nuts down. We want to make sure that everything here is nice and secure. If you have Loctite, by all means put that on now.
Now we're getting close to wrapping up reinstallation. Put your brake back over the top of our brake disc and secure the plate here along the back. Again, we want to make sure to pin that motor line against the arm with that large plate of the brake. Next, we of course can't forget to secure those arms higher up on the joint. And lastly, to finish this job up, we can reinstall our fender by reinstalling all four of the screws that hold it into place. So there you have it, you've replaced the front and rear tires of your scooter. Like I said, not a terribly difficult job, but it does take a little bit more elbow grease than a lot of these jobs are used to. And if you're doing both, it turns into a big project, which is why this upload is probably a little bit more sizable than most. Now this is of course the guide that you're going to be following, whether or not you ran into an issue with one of your tires or your tubes, or if you're just looking to swap and upgrade them into something else. Which brings me to my question for all of you, why are you watching this tutorial? Did you run into an issue with your Cabo Mantis? Or are you looking into some other tires and you're looking to upgrade? If you're upgrading, what are you upgrading to? I'd love to know what you're actually interested in getting onto that scooter as an accessory or an add-on. As always, if you have any questions or concerns that came up with your scooter while you were doing this job, by all means, leave those in the comments down below. If you have any ideas for other videos you'd like to see us do relating to the Cabo Mantis, by all means, leave those in the comments down below too. I'd love to hear your ideas. As always, thank you all so much for watching. I hope that this video helps and I hope you enjoy your ride.